today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> It's Mad Dog Murph. Today, well, I'm up cruising around the old neighborhood. You know, the one I, well, sort of grew up in. <laughs> the one I uh, grew to the age of 18. Let's just put it that way. I don't know that I ever grew up. But anyway, um, I was up in this area on some business and thought I'd just kind of drive around and look at some of the old, uh, some of the old places. Um, Richard Record's old house. Uh, tell you a little bit about him in a minute oh wow there's the old uh, Highland Park Church wow I uh, got a lot of great memories at that ward and oh yeah 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 God, I can't remember uh, can't remember her last name but a girl named Christine uh, she was dating a guy named uh, Rodney Rodney Sellers he had an amazing Mustang yeah Rodney's Mustang wow uh, my friend Larry's house and oh yeah where I used to park my extra cars out here in front of in front of uh, all the neighbors houses because you know in high school I had a few well I had a few muscle cars so, so today I think you know what we ought to do I think we're gonna go to uh, part two of Mad Dog's muscle cars and we're gonna look at some of the cars that influenced me in my young life and my uh, we've already looked at a couple of my high school cars let's look at some more of them shall we so stay tuned for part two of Mad Dog's Muscle Cars from high school. So really this starts back when I was in grade school and I'd be in my backyard playing and I would hear this rumbling sound coming from a couple of houses down through, we had an alley just behind our backyard. And this neighbor of ours, um, was in his early 20s, had this uh, SS RS Z28 1969 Camaro and orange and black it was absolutely a monster and so that was my first real exposure to muscle cars when i was uh, 14 there was a young man in our neighborhood who purchased a blue kind of a look just like this uh, 69 mustang fastback wound up getting some keystone classics on it and i used to see this thing cruise around the neighborhood all the time and again by, by now i'm like you know 14 years old well, one of the other kids in the neighborhood, uh, Jed, I think his last name was Larson, picked up a 69 Mach 1 that had these beautiful rear window louvers on it and a wing, beautiful blue paint. And he and it was Dal Peterson that had that lighter blue one. Um, they would just cruise around the neighborhood. So I was exposed to this a lot in the late 70s. In September of 1978, I started attending Highland High School as a freshman. And I remember some of the upperclassmen there had amazing hot rods. This one in particular was uh, by the football captain at the time. It was a 72 Mach 1, black and white, had rear window louvers, and it was just an amazing car. His name was Craig Marsh, and he had inside this red um, diamond tuck, red velvet interior and it was absolutely gorgeous and the fun part was out here on the fender badge it said 351 ram air and since we were known as the highland rams well i thought this was a pretty cool thing but you know again the black and white mustang with the rear window louvers geez i wonder why uh, i have one today also in that group of high school guys there was evan banks and he had this 1967 mustang no it was not a gt but it did have the 394 barrel in it somebody had ordered it that way and you could see keystone classics that was kind of the wheel of the day i guess and um, he didn't live too far from the school i wound up working with evan later on in my career i first got on full-time with the school district at west high school evan was already a full-time custodian there and i remember one night after school we got into a race out on 400 west uh, my Hoover against his Mustang, and of course it just blew me away. But we remained friends for many years. I still see him from time to time. 
Uh, there was a point in time when he was thinking of selling the car and I offered him 2000 and he almost got it, but uh, nope, didn't happen. So another one of the guys at Highland who lived in my neighborhood was Richard Record. Uh, didn't live too far from me and he had a 1966 Ford Falcon with a 302 in it. And the thing was loud and nasty and just kind of beat up looking. But uh, right before he got out of high school, he actually traded that car in and wound up with a 1969 Cougar Eliminator. And so, uh, yeah, he had some pretty neat Fords. We cruised just two blocks over from where I grew up. There was uh, Kevin Rose. Kevin had this California Special, a 1968 GTCS with a 302. It had a four-speed in it. And it used to hang out with Kevin. He would take us all sorts of different places. Really enjoyed being in this beautiful car with the black interior. And I remember when he went on his LDS mission um, right after high school, he actually offered this car to me for $2,000. And of course, at the time, I didn't have that kind of money. In Mustangs in the neighborhood, uh, Rodney Sellers had this uh, 68 GT that uh, he would drive around the neighborhood in. And again, he was just about a block away from my house growing up. He uh, dated this girl named Christine Lovestad, who was right next to the church. And so I would see this car all the time. And I was so envious of this beautiful black and white Mustang. That was kind of a theme in my neighborhood, I think, black and white. But not completely. Uh, there was uh, Jim Meekum, who uh, lived about five houses away from me, with a beautiful 1966 Mustang with uh, dish mags on it. And I uh, remember Jim was a short little guy, so he had to have the seat boosted up so that he could reach the pedals and you know see out the window and all that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, this was a, car, a fun car to, to ride around in as well. And again, somebody who influenced me. It was originally a darker blue, but he had wrecked it in the driver's ed parking lot. And I had painted the beautiful uh, bright blue, which is what I wanted to paint my Cougar. By this time, I had Mervyn's Miracle, and I really wanted to paint it that same color that Jim had on his 66 Mustang. It was absolutely gorgeous. You can see in my day, everybody either had dish mags or uh, Keystone Classics. That was kind of pretty much the, uh, the default for everybody. Anyway, uh, I liked that blue color on Jim's car so much, I tried to replicate it, but I bought these spray cans because you know, I was cheap. I didn't have a lot of money and I found this color that I thought looked pretty close. And so uh, at one point in time, I painted Mervyn's Miracle with uh, spray cans. This, uh, this blue, and yeah, well, it was fairly close, and actually it was a pretty neat color, um, I thought. During this time, we're up to about 1980 now, um, one of our upperclassmen friends was Pat Chittister, who had this 69 Dodge Charger, had the 383 with the four speed in it, um, had the six pack hood scoop on it, and it had been in a wreck at one point in time, and had a 1968 grill, um, Put on it because you couldn't find a, a 69 grill in any of the uh, wrecking yards here at the time and a uh, pretty darn neat car i remember not long after high school um, pat sold it to me and he sold it to me for a hundred and fifty dollars i am not kidding it didn't run at the time because the uh, the hot wire or something had, had melted but uh, other than that it, it had run fine and I remember I wound up selling this car for a whopping $300. I thought, wow, great, I almost doubled my money. It was in like 83 or 84. Uh, and Dave Knopfsinger uh, here in 80 uh, had his car that, uh, that he uh, drove around. And Dave and I used to hang out together quite a bit. And again, there you go, the dish mags and the color blue. Uh, his was a Corvette blue that he painted this car. And it was a 69 Corvette blue, something like that. I mean, Dave and I got to know one of the custodians at the school. Uh, his name was Robin Anderson, and Robin had this uh, really neat 72 Camaro with a 350 in it, root beer color. Uh, one fender was painted a different, little bit different shade than the other. Uh, grill had been painted root beer color as well. I actually drove this car a couple of times and it was quite nice. What's interesting is now, these many years later, Robin and I are still friends and he is my supervisor. Robin wasn't the only one in our group with a Chevy. We had a friend named Pete Leitner, and Pete had bought this car from a guy named Mike Morgan, who had souped up this 350 engine in the 68 Camaro, and it was an absolute monster. It was the fastest car at Highland by far, and it was really one of the fastest in the city at the time. Out on the driver's ed range there at Highland, 
uh, we would get in these mini races and Pete would always beat anything that uh, went up against him. And from time to time we'd cut class and we'd go out and cruise around and just find cars to get in races with. I know, kind of dumb for a bunch of teenagers, but uh, that's what we used to do back in the day and this car was a monster. And part of the extended group of people that we knew um, and were kind of fr friends with was Robert Gillespie. He'd been given this 1969 uh, Cougar convertible that was his grandmother's car and it was actually in really good condition in high school. Robert went on to become a body and fender man, and from what I know of it, he still has this car to this day. One of the guys that we kind of had a loose association with was uh, Mike Dove, and Mike had a couple of different cars, but kind of the last one he had in high school was this 69 Firebird. And it had a 400 in it originally, but he had pulled that out, and he was going to put in a 455 Oldsmobile rocket. Wow but he never did get around to that. This did have a four speed, it had an M21 in it. And right after high school, um, Mike sold the car to me. And you can see it here uh, with no engine in it, uh, with the uh, turbine mag wheels on it, had a nice interior. Um, I was thinking of putting that engine in it, but I decided to go ahead and get one out of a junkyard. So I bought a 400 out of a junkyard. And I never did get that rebuilt before I sold the car. My plan was to get it uh, running and to paint, uh, make a drag racer out of it and paint this orange peeler on the side. And I was going to do uh, some artwork on the on the trunk lid uh, with a scantily clad young lady. But uh, again, this never materialized before I sold it. 